Hey, what's up guys? As I'm Mark Yoon, and today I'm bringing a hopefully exciting video. So what I want to talk to you about today is a little bit of a conversation that <clears throat> I've kind of been having with myself, honestly. And um, we just did our video on reboots, right? And we were talking specifically about like Mortal Kombat and stuff like that. Now, I do think that Mortal Kombat does a pretty good job with narrative, and uh, they do tell a complete story. However, that's not to say that uh, it doesn't come with a share of problems. So a lot of the times that we're um, talking about reboots, there's reasons why things are rebooted, right? Um, and I feel like Mortal Kombat has come into kind of a cycle uh, similar to something akin to Dragon Ball, I guess is the closest thing I can uh, equate it to, and a, much other uh, publications as well, many, many others. And that is uh, giving, getting to break for your britches kind of deal. So it starts out when you have, like, these uh, recycled villains that we use time and time again, right? Like Shinnok and Shao Kahn um, and things of that nature. Now, I will say that Mortal Kombat is pretty good at adding new characters and being able to kind of uh, shuffle them into the natural order of how the world works. Um, characters are usually pretty fleshed out and, like, they gain popularity pretty quick. Fed characters like, you know, Devora and things of that nature. Um, Kotokan, Takeda, you know, there's there's a ton, right? They always introduce new characters. This does sometimes come at the cost of older characters that some fans want to see come back. Now, I've always broken this up into two camps of people. I call them the Tenkaichi camp and the Budokai camp. <laughs> so if you're familiar with the old Dragon Ball PS2 games, then you're probably going to get this analogy off the bat. There are some people that just want Tenkaichi, so they want like literally every character that's ever been in the series to be in the series. Um, something more akin to what Mortal Kombat did with Armageddon, right? Had pretty much everybody, but the systems suffered for that game. Uh, there was a lot of uh, recycled and reused types of things, and um, the game didn't look super good. Uh, it was... It's still one of my favorite Mortal Kombat's because of like the character creator and like the open world action adventure narrative and things like that. But there's that camp who just wants everything, right? Like even if I don't like the character, I just want them in the game, uh, regardless. And let's make every game like Tag and Tag too, right? Um, so uh, who gives a crap about Havoc? Just put him in there. <laughs> but then while they don't say it that way, when they're asking for that character, um, they tend to beg for it, right? So usually like. I myself have been guilty about this in the past, but I'm, like, a huge Molina fan. So, like, when Molina wasn't in this newer, newest iteration of the game, I was like, I really want Molina back, but I didn't, like, bug anybody about it. I didn't tweet at Ed Boon or anything like that. I just would talk to you guys and complain to myself and my friends sometimes that, like, you know, I really want Molina back. And uh, <clears throat> I feel that's a little bit different than the situation we get with people who get the character that they've been asking for and they just immediately move on to the next character. Um, this happened quite a bit. Uh, the last season, the last pack of DLC that we got, I've known some people who were like, oh man, I've been begging for Fujin since like this game and like I'm so happy Fujin's back in. As soon as the uh, Fujin came out, I saw them asking for another new character. Like, oh, we need uh, Tanya back or something. You know what I mean? They would just go back to like the past or the 3D era especially and just pull random characters out of a hat and be like, we need this character. This character deserves to be in. And I, I can see to a fault like how that would be considered okay. Like every character deserves to be in, I guess, right? Because they're characters. But um, there's the other camp that has the Budokai approach, which is like, I would rather my characters be way more flushed out and unique and have less characters in the game than just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what, what sticks, right? Because you can build a better narrative around fewer characters. Uh, in order to tell a better story and have the characters serve the purposes of the story, um, I would like the focus to be on a little bit fewer of the characters. Whether that be characters that are included playable is not a thing at all. This could just mean that like the characters are in the game, but they're not included in the narrative, right? Um, we see this a lot with Soul Calibur. Um, Characters like Rock and Aeon, uh, characters like that, are usually not included in the main parts of the stories, and main parts meaning, like, the overall narrative to, like, hunt down and find uh, the swords or something like that. They're usually off doing their own thing. It's still related to the plot of what's going on, but they're not an integral part of the main plot, you know? Um, 
I don't know which camp I fall in more because I do love Armageddon and I also do love the narration when it's built around a smaller group of cast. But this is just not the point of the video. This is just a, a tie-in part to it. So I see these people, right? And you want everybody in and you want your villains to be fleshed out and you want to be able to up the ante, so to speak, in every game because every sequel has to be better than the one before, right? Or not, if not better than bigger. So, oh, well, who's going to be more powerful than, like, Shao Kahn to come back? Well, let's bring back Shinnok, you know what I mean? And who's more powerful than Shinnok? All right, well, now let's bring in, like, <laughs> freaking Onaga, the Dragon King or something. I'm not going based on canon, just so, like, you get my gist. And we saw with um, the Titans or whatever in Mortal Kombat 11, a lot of people liked the character designs or liked how they were. Uh, not so many people were on board with, like, how OP they were and where the story had to go in order to, um, I guess, effectively take them down. It was a pretty much end-of-the-world type scenario, and we saw the same thing happen with Algol, right, in Soul Calibur. Like, how do you defeat a character that's that powerful? And it ends up always resetting things because how do you go? How do you tell a story after that? Who's going to come that's more powerful than that? And how are the heroes going to rise to that kind of power level to be able to take them out? Right? The story ends up suffering. Uh, that's why I said it's like a it's like a Dragon Ball kind of trope because it's like Frieza was like the emperor of the universe, right? He was, as far as anyone knew, the strongest being out there, and he was he was so powerful he could do whatever he wants. Until Goku defeated him after becoming a Super Saiyan, and now there's an entirely new realm of possibilities out there of characters way stronger. Until those characters are defeated, and then those characters are defeated, and then those characters are defeated. And the only way to do so is to keep increasing the power levels so much of Goku and Vegeta and the main cast of characters that your Krillins and your Tien Shenhans and your Yamchas get tossed by the wayside, right? Uh, it's the famous meme that Piccolo became like a glorified babysitter, um, even though he was originally the main antagonist of the Dragon Ball saga. Um, well, if you want to, he's a clone of his father, Demon King Piccolo, but we're not here to talk about lore for Dragon Ball, but anyway. So what, what, what would they do? Let, let's say that like they continued the story, we didn't have a reboot, right? Let's just say that like, uh, depending on which ending you had, let's say Liu Kang or Shang Tsung defeated Kronika, right? So what happens now? Like, you can't get anybody stronger than that, and if you do invent somebody stronger than that, like I said, the heroes have to rise to the occasion. So what's going to stop them from going on? I mean, Liu Kang, who started out as like a good monk or like a normal martial artist, I wouldn't even call him a monk, but like part of the monastery that was like a good martial artist who happened to have trained hard enough to become chosen to be trained for the Mortal Kombat tournament and become the best uh, I guess, fighter on Earth from Earth Realm. We get this character, and he's now the fire god of thunder and lightning. <laughs> I mean, of a fire and lightning. He is now a god. Uh, now the teacher has become the master, and now in this next set of events, who knows how the narrative is going to change based on that, right? As somebody who Liu Kang was always my favorite character in Mortal Kombat... It was so cool to see him ascend to these heights, right? If anyone deserves it, it's you, Lou, right? But now, like, unfortunately, he's going to be tossed to the wayside in the next game. I mean, I'm not by the wayside, but we know that, like, um, Kung Lao is going to become the next uh, hero, right? The next champion, which is deserved. There's very many Kung Lao fans who, um, you know want to see him come back maybe in this next narrative now we can see like Kung Jin at some point but the fact that Liu Kang is now overseeing things as the trainer as the new Raiden um I we can expect him to be in a story as much as Raiden was before and what happens in this new universe with the new elder gods and stuff like that like I mean it's it's fine to like play with these narratives but now how are things going to be different right um, it feels like we're at a new starting point just because the last narrative couldn't go anywhere else. Like, it had to start over, right? Is that okay? Um, I believe that the reason that people in the West like manga and, uh, or, or, you know, Eastern comics like manhwa, things of that nature, webtoons, 
is because they're narratives that are told with an open and shut case. There is a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. It's one person's vision executed by a small team. And we get to follow alongside of this person until it reaches its natural conclusion, right? Uh, a lot of the biggest problems that I've heard about for uh, American comics, and that's some that's an industry that I'm in, right, is there's constant world-changing, shattering events back-to-back, right? Uh, there's constant reboots because you, where do you go from here? Like, oh, let's create a multiverse and explain this. And now we're going to get rid of the multiverse and bring it back here. And now we're going to reintroduce the multiverse and do this. And they're constantly just like closing and expanding and changing their characters and siphoning through the roster and trying to keep up and trying to be new and trying to be relevant. And, and they don't see the forest for the trees sometimes. You go through teams right so like when we're looking at american comics we go usually by the team who's working on the project right it's not the project themselves you're not going to say like oh i like x-men right you're going to be like i like you know chris claremont's x-men or i like when jim lee was drawing x-men or you know you would go by like whoever your favorite um writer or artist or team in general was letter inker or whatever uh that's who your x-men are right it may not be somebody else's they could be totally different but all of this comes down to narrative right so i guess if you've been with me through this ramble um where i've tried to collect these thoughts uh thank you but the question that i want to postulate to you guys that i want to hear an answer to in the comment section down below and we may have more conversations like this in the future is Do you think fighting games should continue on with reboots with casts of characters? The same cast of characters that we've seen before. Or do you you think their storylines should end and a new group of heroes should take over the mantle? Uh, This is something I'm struggling with too and I don't have a clear-cut answer because I do like seeing uh, a finalized conclusion to a story. But then I tend to not care afterwards. Uh... Boruto sounds great from the manga, from what I've read so far. I've only seen in the anime up to episode 65 where they fight Momoshiki. But I don't care as much about Naruto's kids as I did about Naruto. So even though Naruto's there, I kind of feel like Naruto's over. Which it is, because now it's called Boruto. But do you get my drift? Does that make sense? It's just like Soul Calibur V almost destroyed the franchise because they got rid of all of our favorite characters and reintroduced a bunch of new characters and it didn't work sometimes it does work like with street fighter third strike but then they initially they eventually go back to the original cast of characters it's not like those characters that were replaced in, in third strike never came back you know so what do we do about these narratives for these games that are outstretching for a long time because it's not like back in the 90s where it's like okay cool tekken 3 came out now we can have uh, Kazuya's son's opinion, you know? Now we can follow Jin. No, because <laughs> now it's like Tekken 7 and Mortal Kombat 12. And, like, you know, th- th- these long stretching things are turning into such a way that the narrative is going to be conjumbled and you're going to start having your favorite teams just like we do for American comics. It's going to be like, oh, well, I only like the original three. Or Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. I only like uh, the 3D era. I only like 9, 10, and 11. Um, Which is fine to have favorites and uh, preferences for which game you have. But the the entire story and lore is going to change depending on who you're talking to. You can be like, hey, my favorite thing about Liu Kang is this. And people who start with 12 with a new rebate are going to be like, Liu Kang, you mean like the Fire Thunder God? And we're like, no, Liu Kang, the lowly monk who rises through the ranks to become Earthrealm's champion. And they're going to be like, who? <laughs> you know? It's like, I can see where that's good and I can see where this is bad. I guess my thoughts are, I'm used to being authoritative on this channel and being like, this is my thoughts, these are my opinions. Do you agree or disagree? But this is like an open-ended conversation that I just want to start. And right now I thought it was the best time to postulate this since we got the announcement of like, well, not the official announcement of Mortal Kombat 12, but... I guess the rumors surrounding WB's um, sale from uh, AT&T and whoever's going to acquire them is going to want a Mortal Kombat 12 to show for their uh, their quarter finances as opposed to Injustice 3, which is a little upsetting to me, but it's neither here nor there. I just don't want the game to be rushed. So let me know in the comment section down below 
whether you want to talk about this more or maybe we'll just talk about this on Saturday's live stream instead. But let me know in the comments what you think. I want to know your opinions on this uh, built around narrative, reboots, character, um, <laughs> villains being OP, heroes having to rise to the occasion, then having to reset the whole universe because things get out of hand. Uh, any and all thoughts are always welcome down below, especially I have a link to my Discord in the di in the description box, so you can click on that, and we have open conversations there all the time. Uh, if you like talking about discussion videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. It would really help out if you would like and do all that other stuff. And with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to a close. And as I always say, I love it. Thank you. And thank you.